Okay, my Algebra 2B folk, here's the Unit 7 practice test. Starts out with some trig. Find the values of all six. So here they are, sine, cosine, tangent. So what we're going to do is we're going to find these first, and then take the appropriate reciprocal to find the other three. So, well, there's a pun. So, ka, toa. That's the first thing that should pop into your head. So, we've got this triangle over here. It's a 3, 4. You could go A squared plus B squared equals C squared if you wanted to. 9 plus 16 equals C squared. 25 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides. And you can now see that it was a 3, 4, 5 family, making things a lot easier. Well, if this is my reference angle, which it is every time, that makes this my opposite side. Makes This is my hypotenuse just because it is the side opposite the 90. Leaving this as the adjacent side. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse 4 fifths. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be 3 fifths. And those are reduced so we're not worried about it. Tangent is opposite over adjacent 4 thirds. Now we need to know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so this is just 5 fourths. Secant, and you got to memorize this, it's not going to be given to you on a formula sheet, is the reciprocal of cosine, so we just flip cosine. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so you just flip tangent. So really, you just need to find three things and flip them. So now they're going to come at you a little differently. So number two. Let theta be an acute angle. So what they're saying is our reference angle cannot be the 90 degree angle. That's basically what they're saying. So put it somewhere else. So we'll put it right there. Now they tell you that sine is 5, 6. Well remember, because of this sine being opposite over hypotenuse, they're essentially telling you that 5 is the opposite side. So if we find our angle and go directly across, that's our 5. And by definition, this has to be our hypotenuse, so that's a 6. There is no 4, 5, 6 family, so we have to use Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's x squared plus 25 equals 36. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. So I get x squared is 11. And now I take the square root of both sides. So I know this is the square root of 11. That can't be broken down. So it says find cosine. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And find tangent. What's that? Opposite over adjacent. And if you notice, we already know the opposite side. So that's 5. We're going to take care of tangent. And we already know the hypotenuse. So we're going to take care of a little part of cosine. So that's 6. we got to find the adjacent side, which we did square root of 11, that's going to go here, and then the square root of 11 goes down here. Now I know this is confusing because you guys uh, have been taught to get the square roots out of denominators, but when um, this gets, well we might as well, let's just get rid of that so there's no confusion. So we get 5 square root of 11 over 11. Um, sometimes they leave it like this, unless it's a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90, but you've been taught to get the radical out of the denominator, so this is probably the likely best answer. Okay, now let's move on to number three. So number three is just a little bit tricky. It says if cosine of theta is tangent of 30, what is theta? So we got to think about, okay, we, there's some way we can figure out what that is based on what they've given us. We're going to start with this. Notice I've drawn a 30, 60, 90. Because this is telling me we need to find tangent of that reference angle. Now, remember, there's no dimensions given, so we need to give it our own dimensions. And the easiest ones to pick in a 30, 60, 90 is if our short side's a 1, hypotenuse would need to be 2. Side opposite the 60 is the square root of 3. So the first thing we're going to do is find out what is tangent of 30 degrees. By definition, that's opposite over adjacent. So this would be opposite over adjacent 
and there it is. So they're saying if cosine of theta equals tangent of 30, so we're going to take this out, and we're going to say cosine of theta equals 1 over the square root of 3, and work from here. This is the way of saying cosine is adjacent, so 1 equals the adjacent, 3 equals the hypotenuse. So we're going to try to draw this situation. Our drawing might not be to scale, but our hypotenuse is the square root of 3. Our adjacent side is a 1, and we would need to figure out what this angle is. So what we have is this situation where we need to find the inverse um, cosine of theta and that's where this little button right here is going to be our good friend so let me clear this out and what we're going to do in order to tell our calculator what to do we got to find this button which is right above I hope you can see it right above the cosine button there's a little blue cosine to the negative one power that just means inverse which is the way you're telling your calculator to find theta if cosine equals 1 over the square root of 3. So we're going to go second, cosine. Notice I've got that little negative 1. Now I'm going to type this fraction in. 1 divided by the square root of 3. Hit enter. And I get 54. So I typed this in. And that spits out what theta is. And that's 54.7. We'll just round it to there. And there we go. So now it says what are sine and cosine of 4 pi over 3. Remember our little trick here. Pi over 3 should be an automatic, which is 60 degrees. And then we need to go 4 times 60, which is 240. So we take our spinner. We always start there. There's 180 out of the 240. So we got to be semi-accurate here. we got to continue 60 degrees. And then we're going to draw our triangle. That has to be 30 because this is 90. So remember our little dimensions up here? We're going to keep those. But if this is a 1, it has to be negative 1 because this is left. This would be my square root of 3, but it has to be negative because it's down. And this is 2. And that's all true because we're in the third quadrant. Now what is sine? Well, here's our reference angle. That would be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine would be negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is adjacent, remember this is our reference angle right here, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's negative 1 over 2. Okay, number 5, an angle has a reference angle of 25, and its terminal side, that's where the spinner ends, in quadrant 2. So this is giving us a little picture, our spinner's here. It goes all the way here, and then it stops in the second quadrant with our reference angle being 25 degrees. So now it's saying, what are the possible measures and a possible measure and a negative? Oh, it's supposed to be positive. Must have been an autocorrect. What's a positive measure and a negative measure for the angle? Well, if I started here, get a different colored marker here, and I went negative meaning go the opposite direction, that's negative 180 plus 25, another negative 25, which would be negative 205. I see that it's right here, and that's pretty much the easiest way to do the problem. So it's got to be D, but let's consider why this is also true. Because if I flipped it this way, and I said, hey, 155, is this plus this 180 because it needs to be and I'd say yes so it's a double whammy reason why that's our answer for number five number six which of the following are measures of the angle shown assume the reference angle is 30 degrees in other words if this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis this reference angle right here is 30 degrees so, select all that apply, which means you better go through each one of them. Negative 510. So we start here. We go down. 
So there's negative 360, and the question is how much farther do we need to go to make negative 510? That'd be negative 150. So notice, negative 150 more would take us right to here, so that is a yes. So, let's try negative 210. If we started here and we went negative 210, we'd have to go 180 plus 30 and take us into the second quadrant. That'd be a nope. 150, if we started here, remember you always gotta start here. You'd start here, go about there. Again, that'll end up in the second quadrant, no. 210, start here, go 180 plus 30, that's another ding, ding, ding. So, not bad. Okay, so number seven. Zhang walks in a straight line from the trailhead at zero, zero. So that means this is where Zhang starts. He travels at an average rate of three miles per hour in the direction 30 degrees west of north. So west of north. So we go to the north direction and we tilt it 30 degrees west of north. There's our drawing. What are the coordinates of Zhang's location relative to the trailhead after four hours? Okay, so if he's traveling three miles per hour for four hours, he has walked 12 miles. That's a good haul. Which means this length right here is 12. And notice we've got a 30 degree angle here, which means this is 60. And if we're trying to find his coordinates, we need a triangle, which makes a 30, 60, 90. So, but we know the hypotenuse is 12. So we go to our short side, which is right here. It has to be half of this, which is 6. But that'd be negative because it's left. And then we've got to multiply that by the square root of 3. But this is positive because it's up. So that'd be 6 square root of 3. So his coordinates, negative 6, 6 square root of 3. There's his coordinates. All right, number 8 is just asking for your transformation language. What is the phase shift of the graph y equals diddle diddle du? Remember, this reflects it over the x-axis, but there's nothing that says anything about that. This plus pi over 4 moves it left pi over 4, and this 2 moves it up 2. Now notice it says 2 units to the right, no. 2 units to the left, no. It's up 2. Pi over 4 units to the right, no. We said left pi over 4, yes. So. They could throw in a uh, rotation over the x-axis. They could show an up or down, but this time they wanted to know whether you knew left or right. So, now this problem says, what is the average rate of change for the function in number 9 over the interval 0 to 2 pi? Now, there's a lot going on here because we need to be able to graph this to really be able to answer it. And that's why I provide you with this little graph. So the first thing we're going to do is graph y equals sine of x. And remember, this is my 1, this is my negative 1. So it starts by going through here. And I'm going to draw one period of it. We could keep going, but I'm just going to stick with this and see where this takes us. This reflects it over the x-axis. So now we're like this. And I might make that dotted orange just so I know that's the last thing we did and now let's continue and so now we need to move that left pi over 4 so that whole orange thing needs to go half of this because notice this is 0 to 90 pi over 4 is halfway so it's half of a unit essentially so this would move here this would move here this would move here and once I get that I can kind of get an idea that it's going to look something like this. It's not perfect, but that's, that's supposed to be right in the middle. But um, All right, so we're not done because it's dotted. And now we got to move that whole thing up too. So my final product is going to be in green, and it's going to go up too. So this spot right here, let's go ahead and put in a 3 here. 
This is up one, we gotta go up two from there, so that's gonna go up here. This right here is at zero, so that's gonna go up here. Where it covers the x-axis is zero, so it's gotta go up two from there, and I can see that it's gonna look like this. And this is negative one, so that has to go up two to right. Oh, wait a minute. Pause, pause, pause. All right, had a little mental block there, but so this right here is ne negative one. That's going to go up to here, and then this right here is at zero, so that's going to go up to here, and you can see what we've done. So this problem is asking us to find the rate of change, which is just another way of saying slope which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 between these two points here. So what do we have here? Well, zero, if our x value is zero and we find it, we can see, we can see that. Let me pause this a second. Okay, so number nine, we're gonna chalk it up as an excellent review on how to graph transformations of the sine function. But uh, I don't think that's the technique we're going to use to solve this problem, so forgive me for that, but you're going to have to go to part two. Uh, so part two begins now, so go to part two.